We showed these patients specific videos, so like videos of faces making facial expressions, videos of people interacting together, side-by-side -side split screen shots of abstract shapes and people uh, doing particular uh, motions uh, or interacting socially. So the idea was that across all of these stimuli, we would code the social parts of the stimulus and the non-social parts of the stimulus. And our whole idea, the whole plan is actually quite simple. We thought the individuals with autism would look at the social parts less than the people without autism. And so we also thought that they would look at the non-social parts more than the people without autism. So essentially their attention would be messed up. They would be looking in the wrong spots. We gave them the video and it was about seven minutes in length and at the end of it we just scored the videos and took a very careful look at how long they looked at each region. We averaged all that information together into something we're calling an autism risk index. And we found that the patients with autism scored very high on this autism risk index. And all that really means is they looked less at the social and more at the non-social. The people without autism scored a lot lower. And the idea being that now we have this method that we can use where we remotely track gaze. And we had some very young kids in our samples, so some three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. We can remotely track gaze in these young kids and then use this information to determine whether or not they actually have autism. We want to do one more replication. The reason being we just want to make sure in a very large sample of kids. So right now we're collecting about 160 kids. We want to make sure that we find exactly the same pattern of results again. And we're going to use some more advanced statistical methods to actually make the autism risk index a little bit more powerful, we think, this time. We think that using this kind of method we're actually going to be even more accurate. But that, so that's step one. Step two is really going to be making sure we can um, develop the whole package together because we need a hardware piece that involves the actual remote eye tracker. And then we need a software piece that communicates with that tracker and is able to use our algorithm to compute the autism risk index and feed that back to clinicians. So that's really the next step is putting together that hardware and software package and then getting it out there to clinicians so that they're aware that this is available, it's not going to be too expensive. In fact, we think it'll probably be even a little cheaper than some of the current diagnostic instruments that require a lot of people and time and are, can be quite inefficient.